The United States has once again taken the world by storm with its latest hypersonic fighter jet. This newly upgraded, all-weather, highly maneuverable tactical fighter has stunned NATO countries and Russia with its advanced capabilities and cutting-edge technology. Despite ongoing sixth-generation fighter projects, the Pentagon is heavily investing in these updated F-15s. This latest version boasts incredible speed and incorporates sixth-generation technologies armed with hypersonic missiles that have a range of over 500 miles. These fighters are both cost-effective and highly advanced. What upgrades has this air fighter undergone? What amazing features does it possess to maintain air superiority? Join us as we delve into the details of the latest hypersonic fighter that has just been tested, surprising nations around the world. The United States is leaving no stone unturned in maintaining its position at the forefront of technological advancement. Not only is it investing in the next generation of air dominance, but it is also upgrading its fighters from previous generations, ensuring they are equipped to handle present-day threats. Following reports of significant upgrades to the Raptor, the United States' first stealth fighter, the nation has also invested in upgrading the F-15EX making it a formidable force in the skies. Before we explore the mind-blowing upgrades, let's refresh our memories on how formidable this fighter jet was and how it came into existence. The McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle is an American twin-engine fighter jet designed for all-weather combat. The United States Air Force selected this design in 1969 to fulfill its need for a superior air combat fighter, and that's exactly what it got. The Eagle had its first flight in July 1972 and entered service in 1976. This technological marvel is one of the most successful modern fighters, achieving over 100 victories with no losses, mostly credited to the Israeli Air Force. The history of this fighter jet dates back to the early Vietnam War when the U.S. Air Force and Navy debated future tactical aircraft. Defense Secretary Robert McNamara wanted both services to use a common aircraft, even if it meant some performance compromises. This led to the TFX or F-111 program, aimed at creating a medium-range interdiction aircraft for the Air Force that could also serve as a long-range interceptor for the Navy. In January 1965, McNamara asked the Air Force to consider a new low-cost fighter for short-range roles and close air support, replacing various older aircraft. The Navy preferred the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk and LTV A-7 Corsair II, while the Air Force leaned towards the Northrop F-5, which had a secondary attack capability. After losing two Republic F-105 Thunder Chiefs to MiG-17s in April 1965, it became clear that a new air superiority fighter was needed. The Department of Defense began considering the F-5 and started studying a new fighter dubbed FX. Initial studies called for 800 to 1,000 aircraft focused on maneuverability over speed. By August, Tactical Air Command supported this idea, lowering the required speed to Mach 2.5 to reduce costs. The Air Force finalized its requirements for an air superiority fighter and sent its request to 13 renowned defense companies. However, studies showed that the proposed designs were too large and heavy, similar to the F-111, and not suitable for air superiority. Combat studies from Vietnam revealed that long-range missile combat wasn't working as expected. Instead, aircraft were engaging in close-range dogfights, highlighting the need for a more agile fighter. This led to John Boyd's energy maneuverability theory, emphasizing power and maneuverability over speed. In early 1967, a new proposal suggested an ideal fighter with a thrust-to-weight ratio near 1-1, a maximum speed of Mach 2.3, and a weight of 40,000 lbs. At the same time, the Navy decided the F-111 wouldn't meet its needs and started the VFX program, eventually leading to the Grumman F-14 Tomcat. The Soviet Union's MiG-25 raised concerns about U.S. air superiority, prompting the Air Force to push for a dedicated air superiority fighter. The Air Force released another request for proposals, 
asking for a single-seat twin-engine fighter with a top speed of Mach 2.5 and a thrust-to-weight ratio near 1.1. McDonnell Douglas was selected to develop the FX, later known as the F-15. The first F-15A flew in July 1972, followed by the two-seat F-15B in July 1973. The F-15 features advanced radar and computer technology to reduce pilot workload and a single canopy frame for better visibility. It became a highly successful air superiority fighter, leading to criticism that it was too large and expensive, which eventually led to the development of the smaller F-16 and F-A-18. It has a mostly metal fuselage with a strong wing mounted high on the body. The wing shape resembles a cropped delta with a 45-degree angle on the front edge. The back edge has ailerons and simple flaps for lift, but no flaps on the front edge. This design avoids complexity by having low wing loading and a fixed camber on the leading edge. The wing thickness varies from 6% at the base to 3% at the tip. The tail section uses metal and composite materials with twin vertical stabilizers made from aluminum and composite honeycomb structures covered in boron composite skin, making them very thin. The horizontal tails move independently to help with roll control during certain maneuvers. The F-15 also has a spine-mounted air brake and retractable tricycle landing gear. It is powered by two Pratt & Whitney F-100 turbofan engines with afterburners, placed side by side in the fuselage and fed by rectangular inlets with variable intake ramps. The cockpit is high in the front of the fuselage with a single piece windshield and a large canopy giving the pilot a full 360 degree view. In the 1970s, advanced titanium components started being used in the airframe. Its maneuverability comes from its low wing loading and high thrust to weight ratio, allowing tight turns without losing speed. It can climb to 30,000 feet in about 60 seconds. At certain speeds, the thrust from the engines is greater than the plane's weight and drag, allowing vertical acceleration. The weapons and control systems are designed for a single pilot to manage air-to-air -air combat effectively. The A and C models are single-seaters for air superiority, while the B and D models have a second seat for training but can also be used in combat. The E model uses the second seat for a weapon systems officer. Unlike other modern fighters, the F-15 doesn't have aerodynamic exhaust covers on its engines due to development issues that led to their removal, causing a slight increase in drag. An Israeli F-15D once demonstrated it could fly with only one wing after a mid-air collision in 1983. Despite losing most of its right wing, the pilot managed to land the plane by using full afterburner and landing at double the normal speed. Wind tunnel tests later showed that flight with one wing was possible within a narrow speed range and angle of attack. This incident led to research in damage adaptive technology and the development of an intelligent flight control system. The avionics system is designed for multiple missions and includes a head-up display, advanced radar, inertial guidance system, flight instruments, ultra-high frequency communications, tactical air navigation, and instrument landing system receivers. It also features a built-in tactical electronic warfare system, an identification friend or foe system, an electronic countermeasure suite, and a central digital computer. The HUD shows all essential flight information from the integrated avionics system. This display is visible in any light and helps the pilot track and destroy enemy aircraft without looking down at the cockpit instruments. The F-15's APG-63 and 70 pulse Doppler radar systems can detect high-flying and low-flying targets without being confused by ground clutter. These radars can spot and track aircraft and fast-moving targets at long and short ranges down to treetop level. The APG-63 has a basic range of 100 miles. The radar sends target information to the central computer for effective weapon use. In close-range dogfights, the radar automatically locks onto enemy aircraft, and this information appears on the HUD. Its electronic warfare system provides threat warnings and automatic countermeasures. The upgraded radars 
which use Active Electronically Scanned Array AESA, technology, include most of the hardware from the earlier version, but with added AESA for better pilot awareness. The AESA radar has a very agile beam for quick track updates and enhanced multi-target tracking. These upgraded radars are compatible with current F-15C weapons and allow pilots to use AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles to simultaneously guide multiple missiles to different targets. Let's talk about the weapon carrying capacity of the F-15. It can carry a range of air-to-air -air weapons. An automated system allows the pilot to release weapons safely and effectively using the head-up display and controls on the throttles or control stick. When switching weapons, Visual guidance for the chosen weapon appears on the head-up display. It can be equipped with four types of air-to-air -air weapons. AIM-7F Sparrow or AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles on its lower fuselage, AIM-9LM Sidewinder or AIM-10, MAR missiles on wing pylons, and a built-in 20mm M61 Vulcan Gatling gun in the right-wing route. Low-drag conformal fuel tanks, originally called fuel and sensor tactical packs, were developed for the F-15C and D models. These tanks attach to the sides of the engine air intakes under each wing and match the aircraft's load and speed limits. While they slightly reduce performance by increasing drag and cannot be dropped mid-flight, they cause less drag than conventional external tanks and hold 750 US.